live from New York. It's Carmine Teaches Photography. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is class number 56, brought to you by me, Carmine Teaches Photography. Hello and welcome back, guys. I want to thank, first of all, all my new subscribers. Wow, you guys have really just made me so happy. You guys are commenting and I'm getting emails and I'm getting thumbs up. Thank you so much, guys. I want to give thanks first to all you guys. So today uh, we're going to break through. We're going to break through the equivalent to writer's block. I call it photo block fever. Okay, so let's say you've been a photographer for a while, a long while decades, or even just a few months. And you've got your gear and you're saying to yourself, I don't know what to take photos of. I have been into town, into the city. I've taken street photographs. I've taken nature photographs. I've taken everything. I have photo block fever. It's just like writer's block, but for photographers. Oh my goodness. What do we do? Well, how about if I told you there was a legal way to have a lot of fun and break through that photo block fever for $76? $76. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this little guy right here. This is the Minolta Peas, the worst name for a camera ever. P's, P apostrophe S, brought to you by Minolta. What is this little thing? What is this completely plastic 35 millimeter film camera? What the heck is it? Oh, you look in the back. What do you see? That is a panoramic, panorama, cut out built in at the factory non-adjustable non-removable it's a panorama uh, framing that does a few things let me explain first do you want to see an example oh, I see you shaking your head over there in New Jersey I see you Okay, all right, calm down. Let's start with the effects. This is the effect that this little camera, this little Minolta piece, it's also known, by the way, as the, let me get it straight now. Let me get my notes. It's known as the Minolta Vista. It's known as the Minolta Riva, R-I-V-A, and the Minolta Peas. Please don't ask me why. They didn't consult me when they named this camera in 1991. Okay, so this is a panoramic camera. Is it a true panoramic camera where the lens moves from left to right onto a long strip of film? And the film has to be concaved. Okay? No. This is a pseudo panoramic camera. Let me explain. Now, Minolta has been, before 1991 when this camera was developed and manufactured, they were in the camera business a long time. They're not the new kid on the block. They know what they're doing. This camera, they knew would be the answer to a lot of people's um, in, uh, interest in trying something new. Now, what did they do to this camera to make it fun? But here's the word. You know, I always use this word in our videos. Autistic. To make you have an artistic mindset 
when you go out to take pictures. Here's what I'm talking about. This camera has a 24 millimeter lens. Okay. It has a 24 millimeter lens hidden behind this automatic lens cap. Well, semi-automatic. You have to throw the switch. Okay. It has auto focusing, auto exposure. Now, it's a 24 millimeter lens. Now, you know, other it looks like a point and shoot, right? Fits in your pocket. Ta-da! It's different than a point and shoot in this respect. Almost no other point and shoot pocket 35 millimeter film camera has a 24 millimeter lens with zero distortion. There's no distortion. This is full frame, by the way. No distortion. It's a, this little camera, right? Now, don't forget, Minolta in the 90s was a pretty big shot around the schoolyard when they made this. This is a 24 millimeter f4.5 five element lens. This little lens in here Okay, that's a five element in five group, multi-coated Minolta lens. Okay, it's, it's pretty groundbreaking if you think about it. That's why this costs right now today on eBay in, of course, secondhand used condition, but working and tested. I had to get this one from Japan. That's why it's named the P's. The P's, P apostrophe S, that model was only sold in Japan. The other ones, the Minolta Vista and Riva, were sold for the, in the United States. It's the same camera, just rebranded. But I got this one from Japan because it was, I shop economically, it was the, be, the best price for a working tested camera. Okay, anyway. So, uh, a little bit more about the camera, all right? The slowest, because it's auto exposure, the slowest shutter speed is one quarter of a second. The fastest shutter speed is one two hundredth of a, can of a second. They knew you were going to do mostly landscape pictures, right? This is, sure, you could use this inside at parties and it makes it fun. It has a built in flash, which you'll see. Uh oh, I covered mine with uh, tape, okay, gaffer's tape, because. It's one of the quirks with this camera, okay? The flash will fire when you least expect it, okay? It has really only one or two things you can change. This button here, all right, is a flash with the line through it. You have to hold it down to take the picture without a flash. If you let go, it'll take a picture with the flash. Okay, I don't know if you saw it, but I have a lot of uh, gaffer's tape on here. Some might have spilled out on the sides. So I tape mine up because I don't want it to go off when I don't want it to go off. And I'm not going to hold, you know, I got big giant hands. I got to fit your fingernail in this little hole to hold it down. It's just awkward. So I said, you know what? I covered it up with tape. Okay, so it has a self-timer. And it has a shutter button, okay? Uh, it has a tripod screw on the bottom. And it does have, it does take one battery, which is a pain in the rear end to change because you need some kind of coin to stick in here, twist it. I hope I don't break it in li on live TV, all right? But it takes one of those huge uh, C... Let me get it right. CR123A lithium batteries. Okay? They're cheap. All right? Okay? But it's a pain in the neck. So if you're stuck without a coin to open up this uh, battery compartment, um, you're going to end up breaking a fingernail, I guess. All right? Okay. Let's keep going. How about this? Can you guys... Can you guys see this? Okay, this is the negatives right here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, 
So this is what the negative looks like, okay? It looks just like the inside of the camera, okay? Its aspect ratio is that of a panoramic look, okay? So here's the inside of the camera, how it's cropped. This is the print. This is the negative, okay? Here's the negative. This is what it looks like. I don't know. I don't know. I'm all tangled up here with microphones, okay? Here you go. Here's your negative right there. What's this film, by the way? This is the uh, Arista 100 EDU uh, developed in uh, D76, 1 plus 3, 17 minutes, okay? So let's put that aside for now. And let's look at another example. Okay, this is the same. What am I pointing at? This is this is a fishing pier here in New York. All right, this is the same pier just taken from the other side. But you'll see, you see how the camera. Okay, you see how the camera forces your brain to think panoramic now yes you could get a regular 35 millimeter camera and a 24 millimeter lens prime and go take the same picture and then in post-production or in the dark room crop it to this aspect ratio sure you could but you have to understand if you take a regular full frame camera with a regular 24 millimeter lens on it you're going to get the whole frame and your brain isn't thinking like this let me explain when you look through the viewfinder okay it's set up in aspect ratio of panoramic let me see if you guys can see this okay you see the frame lines you see how they go all the way from one side the yellow frame lines right Center is where the focusing spot is, and then all the way to the other side. Okay? When you look through the viewfinder, it's training your brain that it's going to take only what's in the frame lines. Your regular camera isn't going to do that. A 6x6, right? Medium format. A 6x9. It's not going to give you this panoramic mindset when you're out looking for shots to take let me keep going this shot okay this is a fishing uh boating area in new york right i was this is a quick side story i'm taking a picture of the the water right and there's a little boat house over there and there's a little dock over here and as I'm taking this picture, quietly, silently, a little kayak just comes into frame. And out of the kayak comes a scuba diver. It was crazy. It was a stormy day. Duh. Right? And the scuba diver just comes up out of this kayak. I don't know. It was pretty it was pretty crazy. All right. But this, this video is not about, um, you know, stories. We'll have a whole, we'll have a whole couple of dozen photo classes on just stories. All right. But the beauty, the beauty of this little $76 film camera. Okay. Uh, is that it remember how we started it gets your brain out of that writer's block equivalent it gets your brain into gear to think about one thing to think about what would look good in a panorama what would look good in a panoramic photograph okay now you could take verticals Eh, that's what i'm going to say Eh. 
but verti- but horizontal pa- panoramics, unreal. Okay, let's keep going. Um, I keep going. Okay, it ta- it will read your DX coded film. Okay, right here, you'll see the pins. See those pins, right? It will read DX coded film. <clears throat> However, not that many. It'll read. 100 let me just get this in here okay it'll read 100 iso film dx coded up to 400 so if your film is in a canister with no dx coding coding c-o-d-e coding right it'll set the camera at 100 iso which is okay because for me personally, I uh, hand roll my own film, right? I hand roll Shanghai GP3 into reusable cassettes and they don't have uh, DX coding, right? Yeah, I know you could buy the little labels and stick on it, but no. The film is 100 ISO, so there's no reason to do it, right? So I just want to let you know about that. Um Autofocus, auto exposure, uh, takes one battery. Ah, now getting back to the battery. Okay. The battery will be good for, how about this? 600 photographs. If you round up the numbers, that's 17 rolls of 36 exposure film. That's not bad. 17 rolls of film. That's not bad. All right. So, uh, the the uh, the point of this video today was to break through the equivalent of writer's block. We get photo block, photo block fever, and this little seventy six dollar camera might just be the prescription to get you out of that mental fog of I don't know what to take pictures of. All right, and remember. This is not a camera you're going to use every day. This is a camera you're going to have in your medicine cabinet when you have the photo block fever and you need a prescription to break out of the doldrums of you have no idea what to photograph. When you have a 24 millimeter lens and you only can take panoramic pictures, it clicks into overdrive and you go out the door and you start looking at landscapes differently. All right? Whew. We did it. And you have to remember to turn off your camera by closing the semi-automatic lens cap. Okay? So, I want you guys to uh, look into it. And remember, remember one thing. Photography equipment. When you buy it, you're really only holding on to it for a while. And then you list it, you sell it, and you try something else. Photo gear, right? Especially what we like, film photography gear, right? They're not making that much of it. So when people sell stuff, they're like, oh, let me grab it. Especially if it's tested and working, right? Because it's something new. Even though it's been around since 1991, the Minolta P's, right? It's been around since 91. But when you get it in your hand, it's 2022. All right, guys. Uh, let's do some housekeeping. Subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Comment below. This is all your homework. Send me an email. Blackandwhitephoto at AOL.com. Uh, oh, the most important thing. Go to my gallery, CarmineTaverna.com, and you'll see all these photographs uh, in high resolution, high definition, right? You'll see all these photographs taken with the panoramic camera, the Minolta P's. <laughs> I love saying that. Hey, what camera is that? Oh, this is my Minolta P's. Oh, boy. All right, guys. So go to my website. On my website, it has a little search box. You could put in Minolta. 
You could put in P, the letter P. Have fun. And if you right click on the picture and it says open the picture in another box. Is that the right word? Uh, tab. Open the picture in another tab. Boom. You get almost a full screen size uh, blow up of the picture so you can really look at the detail. And I have to tell you, it's a very sharp lens. I'm looking here where I focused pretty sharp. It's a pretty sharp little five element, 24 millimeter. Come on, come on. In this little package, 24 millimeter, 24 millimeter multi-coated five element, five group lens. Look at this. Oh boy. What a pleasure this little guy is. All right. Have some fun. Oh, and don't forget when you're inside, right? When you're inside, you got to do two things. Let's say you're having a party or you're at a bar, right? Think about how much you can get in. It's a 24 millimeter lens, right? The flash, don't forget what I told you to do. Make yourself your own diffuser because you don't want you don't want harsh shadows. Take a tissue, right? With a scissor, neatly, right? Neatly. Take your tissue paper. Put it over, put it over the flash neatly. It's not going to look all jagged like this. You put it over the flash, right? You attach it with some scotch tape, some clear adhesive tape, whatever they call it where you are, right? Boom, done. Flash diffuser, cost zero. Quality of the flash pictures, better, okay? So we did it. We went 22 minutes. I'm trying to get these compressed. Sometimes YouTube says, hey, you could make better videos if you don't go an hour. <laughs> All right. Guys, take it easy. I had a bunch of fun with you guys today. Uh, we we talked about writer's fog, writer's block equivalent, photo fog, whatever the hell I called it. All right, guys. This has been episode 56, live from New York. I will see you on episode 57. I love photography. I love learning still till this day photography after 49 years in the biz. And I love teaching what I've already acquired in my little brain. Take care, guys. See you next time.